All right, so I'm in the shop today. I'm having to do some fix-its on my RC four-wheel drive excavator. This is the Earth Digger. You've seen me use this excavator in many, many, many films. I, I have to say, and this will shock some of you, a lot of you have asked, what is your favorite RC? If you had to have only one RC forever, which one would it be? And I gotta say, I really like construction. Like I love digging. I love the weight of this machine. It's got to weigh 40 pounds depending on the battery you put into it. Uh, and yes, it does have a hard time digging into thick, dense soil. Like if you're just digging into straight ground, you're not going to have a good time because the weight ratio, even though it's got great pressure, I think it's uh, 20 bar in here. It might be higher, but 20, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I got to tell you that the, the, it does dig if you got freshly dug soil or or stuff in your garden you know that you've dug that year this will dig it but if it's like five-year-old soil you're not gonna get anywhere but I digress gravel sand rocks all the stuff I've had fun with it and you guys can check out the videos of course uh, in the uh, construction uh, series that I've done I'll put a link to a playlist below where you guys can see this in action but enough talk I was a dum-dum and I cleaned it out with some water one day, which is not unusual. The rust is real. These are all steel tracks. This whole thing is quite heavy, um, but I washed it out and then I didn't leave it to dry long enough. And what happened is because I fired it up the next morning, though some water had gotten in there and hadn't dried out. This is the actual ESC. It's pretty big. It's 125 amps. Uh, which is which is large the ESC basically takes the power from the battery Regulates it and distributes it to the motor. So it, it's the brain. It's one of it's like the heart You know pumping the electricity through the whole machine now. Yes, this is a hydraulic unit This is a hydraulic uh, tank back here this giant motor on the inside Yeah, it's like a helicopter motor runs a pump and runs everything around I've done how how this works video before you guys can check it out in playlist below um, so if you guys want to see in detail it'll show you that today I got to swap out the ESC 125 amps 2 to 7 s lipo blew it with some water in there that was an expensive mistake so bye bye this is the replacement i have the one i found is actually a 200 amp esc it's a ubec so it's got a great power regulator in there already for a brushless motor so one of the things i noticed with this one is that the motor uh, didn't have as high rpm as my original excavator i do have two of these we've collected over the last many many years of doing the show uh, just so we could have good construction scenes so we've had some some power differences the other one definitely has a higher rpm motor i don't know why because they're the same i couldn't tell if it was the esc or this particular motor so we'll slap in the 200 amp run a three cell lipo in here i usually run an 8400 minimum i run a uh, 4200 but that's not long enough 5000 right in the middle is good uh and we'll just try and get this fired up again today. Too bad, I really messed that up. But it gives me a chance to get to work. So basically it's surgery that I need to do today and I have removed the three screws on the bottom that normally hold this pump in place. This motor right here spins at high speed to a pump that's in here and of course draws from the tank and into the whole system and servos that move back and forth actually control the flow of the hydraulic fluid. Pretty straightforward, simple hydraulics. Simple if you're used to hearing it or have done it before. Hopefully this kind of thing will help you understand a little bit more. Now here is a little uh, regulator for the lights. This is a light switch. I just taped it up to make sure it was a little bit strong, stronger than just having the, 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 the solder points there. Kind of tuck it off to the side. This is the pump pressure regulator. Now I don't really mess with this. It's an Allen key uh, or a hex uh, screwdriver that you can use to increase the pressure but I've never needed to this thing has plenty of pressure and of course let's see how this is <clears throat> already 
uh, just through pressure and whatnot, me moving it around, this wire has come out from the ESC. And what it's going to be doing is going into these power bricks. Check this out. This is going to freak a lot of you guys out that are electronics buffs that love a neat package. Look at all that that had to come out from underneath this box here. What we're looking at are the ESCs, one ESC per track unit, right? So if we're running left and right track, you need a uh, ESC for either side, plus you need an ESC to run the turret in the middle, so turning left and right. So right there, that's three brushed motors, plus you have a brushless motor over here. <laughs> so that's okay, I try to keep it as tidy as possible. I keep these connector points uh, or these connections blocks as clean as I can. Uh, also, because hydraulic fluid likes to leak in here from time to time, look at this, glad it was in there. Uh, just a little cloth to catch any over spillage or whatnot. And of course, look at this receiver, <laughs> packed full uh, <clears throat> of all the signal wires, the BEC wires, uh, everything for controlling all of the servos. Because we have on the inside here, one, two, three, four servos that actually uh, control the whole hydraulics of this vehicle, which is the arm going up, the arm extending, and of course the bucket moving back and forth. Woo! ESC time for the main brushless motor. <laughs> so looking at this, I'm gonna have to remove it here, which is fine, and then just basically replace it with the same one that we have here. Let me bust open the package. Mystery, electronic speed control. That's the one we're using in case you're interested. Looks like they already have the ends clipped and ready to go. That's handy. And I'm gonna need a Phillips. Philip, where are you? Very nice. Now, in the receiver, of course, has the lead for the ESC. I wanna remember what plug it comes out of. Looks like it's channel five. Everything else is full, so that's good, channel five. And it's been removed. I had already cut the uh, wires from the motor last time. Basically take this, put it right back into channel five. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this label on here so I can make room for the onboard fan. Very nice. Try not to leave any jagged edges, and I'll probably have to clamp down this end just for it to fit in the box, but we'll see. All right, so negative and positive. The only thing I'm thinking here is because of the size of the end, I'm gonna need to flatten it for it to get in there properly. So I'm gonna go ahead and use some vice grips. Just put the end in and clamp it down. Ah, there we are. That's adding pressure to the wire right now and now it's nice and flat. I'll trim it up. I just want it to be a nice little fitting that goes into that area. There we are. Maybe a little bit more. Making sure not to cut that wire that we just attached off. There we go, fitting nice and flat. And into the connector it goes, very nice. And there we are, this one feels like it's gonna fit just fine. Didn't need to trim that one at all. Very nice, so that's how it attaches to the block. So now that we have that connected, one, two, three ESCs and a fourth with the battery, right? Everybody can see how that's connected. 
This has been connected to the receiver box. So I'm gonna go ahead, wash out this compartment down below and put another uh, absorbent pad down there just in case any hydraulic fluid wants to get in there in the future and we can tuck some of this back underneath. Just a regular shop towel here. Perfect. All right, so the radio receiver on the side and these three ESCs on the inside near the front. There we are, the two junction boxes slide in like that. Then the receiver with the antenna near the top. So the receiver, the junction boxes, this ESC right here basically just floats around because I'm gonna be soldering it to the motor right here and the battery goes here. So this can sit on top or just off to the side right here, which is where I normally put it. Heat shrink tubing. It's like a wire sheath that goes over open electrical joints like this and protects them from shorting. So number one, I gotta heat up, like I gotta heat up this end right here and the next wire, but I wanna make sure to put this sheathing on before I actually heat up the wire. It looks a little more tidy with the uh, heat shrink tubing, that's for sure. Now I wanna heat up both sides of the wire. A good soldering iron or soldering iron, depending on where you're from, is definitely the key to making this job easier. I'll go ahead and move this wire sheathing into place. I usually try to get, line it up in the middle Use a lighter, go ahead, shrink it up. You could also use a heat gun, that'll help. And then there, now this, this can touch anything and it won't be shorting. All right, so 3S LiPo battery, uh, 50C, no, 40C discharge. Not too bad, got everything hooked in. Radio on, do 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 Good, all the switches are in the proper position. Everything's looking nice and tidy. Let me see here. So to show you guys what this looks like on the inside one more time, even though it's kind of a rat's nest, it's an organized chaos in there. I could definitely put my ESC here if I wanted, but I just don't want it to run too close to the motor. So I normally have it here. Plus it keeps it off the ground uh, and it keeps it away from any hydraulic fluid. So I'll probably put another foam brick or something underneath there, but that's how it looks. Let's see here. Smoke and fire or power? <laughs> ah, that's always good. <laughs> good, so the fan isn't giving me any trouble. Not too much there at all. And there's only one thing to do. And to activate that ESC is this switch right here. Ooh, that motor, hey? So it is working. It's flowing, but I'm not getting enough RPMs out of this motor. I honestly think that motor is toast. I got another motor. Let's switch it quickly. This is the motor and pump system. So the pump is on the front, the giant motor on the back. The motor spins, the valves open and close depending on which way the motor is turning. Then I have four screws to remove the motor. Remove this motor. Introduce my new motor that I had on backup. Radio is on, motor now installed, ESC is out of the way, battery is in place, lights, camera, smoke and fire, or did it work? Good, that's how far we got last time. Let's flick the switch. Yeah.
Okay, some of you might actually say that sounds broken. <laughs> the RPM uh, is quite high on this motor and I don't even have it all the way up. I don't even have it at 50% for power that it can push. Uh, but the actual pump itself, that little mechanism I was showing you, uh, it actually is quite noisy. And, and, and though this is quite expensive, uh, actually at the time of this filming, it's just under two grand right now. I bought it when they were 3,000. This is US dollars, by the way. And this is still one of the least expensive excavators that are hydraulic on the market. So, you know, if you want to get in, you got to pay to play. But I digress. Let's actually run some of the air through the lines here just to try to get it out and see if I can cycle it through. 